Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. We're going to hop back in here. We've got Emery Davis uh, internationally here connecting with us to talk about his favorite maples. Y'all, I'm super excited. We just shot a podcast with Emery. So if you haven't heard that podcast yet, if it's out yet, go listen to it. If not, it's coming real soon. Uh, Emery has been real involved with the Maple Study. has a gorgeous collection of maples, growing an immaculate garden in France of all different types of maples. So Emery, I appreciate jumping in today. Hey, it's great to be with you guys. Really appreciate it. You're an aficionado when it comes to maples. We talked a bit about this in the podcast, but huge collection on many acres and a huge selection of Japanese maples and other species maples as well. Emery, what, what was your first experience with maples? Well, I think probably like a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I, I went and I got, uh, I got a the shoujo. Uh, you know, and because some guy at the nursery convinced me that it was going to be the most amazing thing in spring that I'd ever seen, you know. And so I got it home and I planted it and it turned out to be some kind of atroporium. It was not a disclosure at all, of course. But I looked at it and I said, gee, this is great. I love this. Um, this is this is fantastic. I'm happy to have this in my garden. And so when I, you know, kept on going through the books and going around, I just, uh, just kept on, kept on going. Well, let's get into some of your favorites. Uh, I, I know a few, but, uh, let's talk about five of your favorite maples. Um, you can pick species or you can throw a six or seven in there if you really want, yeah, but if you want to pick species or Japanese maples, you're welcome to, uh, I, I love hearing people's recommendations. This is a question I always ask people, whether it was Peter Gregory Wherever I'm at, I would always ask them, like, what's your favorite maple and what are your top favorites? And I, I find it's just interesting and our our listeners learn a lot uh, just hearing pe- people's different choices. It's interesting to see what different people pick. So, you know, we were talking about uh, how uh, in our garden here, we emphasize the variegated maples less than uh some other gardens do which is not to say because it's a pretty big garden that we don't have a boatload of variegated maples because we do but i'm going to start with one it's not a japanese maple it's a european maple Mm -hmm. and i think that you guys probably have it it's it's a a a acer campestra so it's a field maple or a hedge Mm -hmm. maple as they're sometimes called and it's called a pulverulentum uh so it's a it's a maple that is dotted with you can almost say dotted with green it's like it's Mm -hmm. white and it's dotted (laughs) with green rather than green dotted with white but it has the occasional leaf where half the leaf will be a really dark green so you get this beautiful contrast of this just glowing you know uh thing and uh in the spring it's just awesome i mean it's just an incredible looking thing to 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 see and amazingly enough it doesn't really burn very much unlike a lot of the uh variegated field maples there's a yellow one uh which is called postalensi which burns like crazy it's a beautiful maple but you really have to put it in the shade Mm -hmm. this one it lights up a corner or a carnival is the one that everyone is uh, uh, selling now, which is not one of my favorite maples. But uh, um, but uh, pulverentulum, uh, pulverulentulum, um, which I can never say right. Uh, That's a mouthful. The uh, the sun shines on it, and it only it almost goes a little bit uh, purpley uh, mm-hmm. in the sun. So you get this the 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 white. Uh, with the dark green flex and a purple thing, and it just looks looks beautiful all uh, all uh, summer long, and it actually turns a pretty nice uh, pretty nice yellow in the fall too. So impressive yeah. tree, yeah, that's a really impressive tree. That I, I like a lot of the Easter campestras. I think a lot of people here in the United States struggle with campestra because they try to grow it like a Japanese maple, like an Easter pile made them. And it's a European field maple. I mean, most of these trees prefer a little more sunlight to d- really develop a good root system. And it's very different than a Japanese maple that, you know, is naturally growing in that understory, that more shaded situation. 
And so a lot of people here will start growing those campestras, but try to grow it in their Japanese maple garden and they struggle. And I started, you know, I made this mistake when we first started growing campestra. And then when we started putting it out in the sun, I'm like, oh, this is a, this is a beautiful tree. This is a tree that's, that's growing and doing well. And, you know, mm-hmm. or into them, that's, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I'm murdering how to say it too. I mean, half these Latin names, I'm like, how do you really say this? Okay. Uh, this one, but, I, I spelled it wrong for years too, believe me. <laughs> it, it's one of those trees that just puts on just a spectacular spring display. It, it and, does. And it does pretty well in the shade. I've got it in a pretty shady spot. Uh, it's got, it's next to a uh, uh, Olivarian Manum uh, Nakahari Benny uh that grows behind it and kind of up over it and then there's a beautiful uh cornice there which is called uh candlelight uh mm. which i don't know if uh if you guys uh have in your stock beautiful uh, uh cornice controversa so big pagoda tree that's almost pure yellow white so it makes a really nice uh contrast but the thing about the campestras which is great for people to realize is that they can grow in almost any soil so they're one of the few uh not the few but but one of the the smaller number of maple trees that you can grow in a chalky soil Mm -hmm. uh, in an alkaline soil and it will do absolutely great uh they like it or you can grow like we have a a soil with a ph of around four seven so oh wow extremely acidic uh, and it's happy as could be, um, you know, so it's, uh, so it's great for that. So that's, that's, uh, that's my, that's my first one. I won't call it my top, but, uh, all right. What's see. next on your list? All right. I'm going to give you one that, um, that you can get and it's, it's just such a good Japanese maple. Uh, I mean, I can't wait to get this thing in the ground. I, I have it in a, I have it in a, I guess about a two gallon. So it's uh, about ready. Maybe not this fall, but next fall I'll get it in the ground. And that is Lillian's Jewel. Oh yeah. It is just a spectacular maple. I haven't seen it burn at all. Uh, I don't know if it does. It's been, you know, it's still in a pot, so it's in some shade but uh maybe you guys can tell me how well that takes sun now you're telling me these european sensibilities don't like the flashy stuff but this is getting pretty flashy right here this is, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you the flashy stuff. i love it lillian's jewel uh named by my good friend uh jonathan savage uh right. for his daughter lillian great plant uh we've we've been in love with this plant for a while it's, it. it's a great it's for us it's the best pink on red it's been the most stable pink mm-hmm. on red you can get some version you still have to prune it you know, it's in that rainbow Ujinami Nishiki category. We have to prune it a little bit if you get an all red branch, but it gets less of that than any of those other types for us. So the As reversion it, rate's really low. Yeah. Uh, rainbow, you know, gets smaller and smaller, uh, but uh, Lillian's drool hasn't shown an all red branch at all. I'm sure it's not to say it won't, but. Uh, it, it's one that's proven to us to be fairly heat tolerant. We've got a very different heat than you have uh, in France, uh, down in Simpsonville, South Carolina, one of our good friends, Richard Bomar, had one of the very first Lillian's Jewels uh, that was out. Uh, we both got it at the same time, so we each had one. And he was growing his in full sun in Simpsonville, South Carolina, which is a much hotter zone, uh, mm-hmm. a much hotter heat index. You know, they get, you know, in the, you know, sometimes 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And, it was thriving and doing well in that high heat setting and uh the humidity in the south is very different than say the humidity in france or the humidity in oregon so there's all different types but lillian's jewel has proven to be fairly heat tolerant in all of those conditions that i've seen i love this tree just because it was our cool thing 10 years ago and it's still cool now and it's it's one of those special plants that uh I love it too because it sells out really quick as a nurseryman when we offer it. It's a good plant to it's a good plant to see coming up soon because it always uh, tends to be very popular and resonate with people. But it's because it's so striking with that pink on red contrast. You know, I've only had it for well, only had it. I've had it for uh, for four years, I think, 
I told you guys uh, earlier on the podcast, my goal with a maple in a pot is to get it in the ground as fast as I can. But because it's so wet in the winter time, you know, it has to have a certain size before it's mm -hmm. really going to be viable to do that. So, but in the four years that I've had Lillian's Jewel, you know, my eye goes to it just like a shot every time i'm out with the pots i'm like oh look at that that is just a drop dead beautiful plant so but uh, well, but i think it is also one of those plants like in your podcast when you put it in your garden it's gonna steal the show <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> i have to hide it i'll hide it someplace uh all right so uh what's next we've got lillian's jewel uh do you have another uh, of your top five here yeah, you know, I'm going to go for a uh, I'm going to go for a plant that um, that uh, is a uh, it's another Japanese maple and, and it is variegated, but it's so the variation is so uh, minor that you can kind of miss it, uh, and that is the Japonicum uh, Kujaku Nishiki. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, now, I don't know if you guys uh, have that there. It makes a big, uh, sprawling uh, plant, almost like I forget what that, um, uh, uh, what the conifer is. There's this conifer that people like to plant out, and it takes up a huge, uh, huge amount of space. It's, a, it's almost like an octopus uh, thing. It takes up a big space. And you don't see the variegation much during the, during the summertime. Mm -hmm. but when it starts to turn in the fall it's you know it's a beautiful plant uh but uh but but green i have a couple of other we got a grisium next to it and uh a uh a nice uh, uh dissectum called the uh, uh don't tell the binch which is one of uh, benoit Sh shoto's introduction <laughs> uh introductions then there's a yusagumo and a, and a hoshi yadori uh, they're all right there in that group Oh my yeah. gosh, we've got to get a tour of this garden going. Maybe maybe we'll <laughs> mail you a GoPro and you can send us back a video because I've I've got to see. I, I did see one YouTube video once of touring your garden, and I my I, my jaw was on the ground. My eyes were bugging out. I I, I love the japonicums though. The fall colors and the japonicums are some of the best of any of the maples. And, and this one it turns differently. That's where you see the variegation because you get all these kind of like stripes of, you know, orange and with the red and, you know, a, a little part stays green. Uh, we were talking about Utsu Semi earlier, turning all these beautiful different colors uh, at the same time. This is similar, but it's also a, a very heavily dissected maple, mm -hmm. much more dissected than, uh, than uh, uh, Cuban Lobum. Uh, for example, or fern leaf is uh, you oh, got nice, nice. Cool. So we've got three here. Let's move along. What what's next on your list? All right, here you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna wow you with uh, s something completely non-standard, and that is a Norway maple, uh, Acer platinoides, uh, called Therant. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you've seen this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've offered yeah, it. That's one of my favorites. All right. I first so, saw it at Trompenburg Arboretum in my eyes. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a stump plant, right? It breaks the definition of Acer. You look at this thing and you say, wait, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a, you know, those little round leaf things that you throw in your salad. Um, <laughs> it, it, it looks like, it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like a maple at all. It's got these beautiful round nasturtiums. The leaves look like nasturtiums. And uh, and they're kind of flat. They're held at an angle. They're bright, shiny uh, green. And uh, uh, and then it, you know everyone looks at it and kind of scratches their head. And, what the heck <laughs> is that? It's just an absolutely beautiful thing. Nice upright form. Uh, so it's uh, it keeps it keeps into its own uh, space. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, nice orange fall color you know uh makes it makes makes a really a great plant that you could plant in a smaller garden too because it doesn't uh it doesn't take up a huge amount of space mm -hmm. and it uh has an interesting feature that if it does have seed on it it's one of the only maples that doesn't actually make samaras with keys with wings oh, really? the wings are truncated 
uh, because of its mutation. So it makes these sort of triangular uh, uh, little pods, almost as if you only had the nutlets. So uh, I've never seen the one, seed on it. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I showed one of those to uh, to Coon uh, Camelbeak at oh, uh, yeah. at West Bilar and said, "So." You're the expert. Tell me what this is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's so so cool just because it looks like little lily pads almost to me. Like it does from like it pond, does. and it's just like it just has this unique layering habit. And it's a Norway maple. I mean, that's just I, I first crazy. saw that tree at uh Trompenberg Arboretum uh with the late great Peter Gregory, and he was fooling people with this one, asking them what it was, and you know, everybody was getting it wrong and that it didn't key anything right. And it's oh, like nearly impossible. That. It breaks all the rules. Uh, absolutely love that plant. Uh, Coon will have to get him on here one day. That guy makes me feel so dumb. I, I talked to him about a plant and then I realized he's in like his third language describing it to me more eloquently than oh, I can. Oh, I'm like, right. Oh Coon wow. This guy's brilliant. But uh, Coon yeah, is an absolute sweetheart too. And, uh, you should definitely, you should definitely have You've done all of our customers a great service because I don't have rent on my graph list and we're about to do some plat. And I just realized I've got to go get some of those cuts so we can get those back into propagation. That's a really there you good go. point. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And the good thing is too, you can grow it in the North. You can grow it in the South. Uh, you know, and it's sterile. So if, even though it's a Norway maple, uh, you can plant it in the state where the Norway maple is considered an invasive species, species like the state of New York. You're not actually oh. allowed to plant Norway maples, uh, but this one you can um, because it's sterile. So uh, Very cool stuff. And, and I, I just love anything that breaks all the rules. That one's funky in all the right ways. It just It's just weird and cool. All right, we're all the way up to five. What else you got? All right, I'm going to give you one more. And... Uh, it's a uh, it's a maple that uh, I'm giving you ones we didn't talk about earlier. I, I'm going to give you one that uh, now has the unfortunate name of uh, Acer pubinervi, uh, <laughs> and uh, it um, I could look it up and start with a W. Maybe you guys remember with the old Acer maple. Wuyu and it's the chocolate maple. chocolate maple. We kind of yeah. abbreviate it as the chocolate maple here to keep it. That's what easy. I call it. That's what I call it to it. That way everybody can, you know, listen to, to listen about it without being offended. So the maple, as you know, when it when it comes out in the spring, it's this absolute glossy chocolate color that uh is uh you know, it it looks like if you've ever seen someone uh in a restaurant do fine chocolate work, you know, right, right. chocolate is it has that gloss to it, like it's tempered to the exact right temperature and it's not just a chunk of chocolate it's <laughs> right. got that beautiful gloss stuff. to it and uh with beautiful uh five lobed uh leaves which sadly uh, have a little bit of hair on the underside of them hence the name change <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it stays that way it looks great and it gets a nice uh nice orange red in, in the in the fall it's a it's an enthusiastic grower it likes the sunshine uh you know there's the, there's nothing not to like about it except very hard to get hold of. That's uh we're, we're i'm a big i'm a big fan of this one too we've offered it this year uh here grafts on the palmatum yep beautiful beautiful palmatum. plant and i think underrated and uh, you got some dog plants out at buckholz nursery because it's going to be a priority for us getting some of these cool species and making them available i mean that's that yes. is what it's about is being able to offer some of these cool species to, you know, our customers, to garden centers. So that one's got a lot of ornamental qualities. I think anybody can get behind. It's a mouthful in the name. Yeah. Uh, you know, we stick to the common name sometimes with the customers, yeah, even though we'll yeah. uh, just show them that it's on the label, but here's the common name you can remember. Just stick with that. But yeah, you know, it's a maple that is worth any cultivar. Uh, right, you know, in terms of its, uh, in terms of its, uh, it, its, uh, its characteristics, and you know, it's just different enough from your standard uh, Japanese maple uh, of, of, you know, any of the palmatum, palmatums, or amoanums, or or japonicums, uh, shirsuanums. It's got those very pointy leaves, very indented, so it's got an exotic architectural look to it. 
which oh, I, I agree. Think is, which is uh, super uh, interesting in in the garden, especially if you have a Japanese maple collection. You know, you put that in the middle of it, and it's going to fit right in, and you know, give a great, uh, great little bit of of, uh, of interest too. It's I've had one here in the ground in six B, and it's been through negative uh, nine, no problem here in Western North Carolina. It looks there's, phenomenal. Uh, there's one planted in full Maybe, sun at no. the J.C. Rouse and Arboretum. Mm -hmm. There's one at the Morris Arboretum. Uh, there's the a there's another one at the National Arboretum in D.C. So I've been real impressed with its its range and durability there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one we're going to keep doing just because it's fun and funky and kind of fits that outside the box a little bit mold too. It's and something it, that's uh, it's in section palmata too. I mean, it is closely related to your Japanese maples, so it has absolutely. a lot of that Japanese maple like feel. It has some cool characteristics with it, and who knows mm -hmm. what all these species in right. section palmata will open us up to for the future of Japanese maple. And who doesn't like some good fine chocolate? So <laughs> that's right. And a lot of these are Chinese maples. Yeah. Which uh, you know, which we're just starting to see. You know, this is a maple, you're talking about a few places where it's growing uh now. But twenty years ago I don't think it was growing in all those places. Right. Uh you know, but now there's a lot of uh interaction between the National Arbor Arboretum and the Academy of Science, between uh, between the Morris and the uh, Kunming uh, uh, Arboretum uh, in uh, Nanjing. So there's a lot of good cross cross fertilization, we can say, and a lot of plants that you know we have here, we're being able to get to grow there, and plants that they have that we're getting to grow here. So it's, uh, it's great stuff. Uh -huh. Emery, thanks so much for hopping on here. Uh, to our listeners, if you haven't already, make sure to catch his podcast. We did a full podcast with this guy. Fascinating, interesting stuff talking about maples. I think you're going to really enjoy that one. And thanks for everything you're doing with the Maple Society as well. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's always great to talk to you fellas. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Emery. Take care. Take care now. God bless. And have, have a great, great day. day. God bless. Bye. <laughs>